Hi, I'm Cassandra Brush, and this is Zero Waste Central. Uh, we are here to talk about ways our community can move towards zero waste. Today, I have a guest, Colin O'Neill, from the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, who, by the way, brings you this program. And Colin is here to talk about the ARC. Colin, tell us about the ARC. What is the ARC? Well, Cassandra, the ARC, um, well, first of all, it stands for Additional Recyclables Collection Center. Mm -hmm. It's located in our warehouse in downtown Barrie. Um, the warehouse is the center of our field operations to store our equipment in um, and to run our ARC collections out of. Mm -hmm. So what do you do at the ARC? You said your field operations, but what exactly happens? I've been hearing about this ARC, seeing advertisements about the ARC. What do people do when they come to the ARC? Um, well, regarding ARC collections, um, we have an unloading area where people park their car and come on in carrying their additional recyclables mm -hmm. to then be placed into um, one of maybe 15 uh, bins, totes, or just small boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, we consolidate those materials and either ship them via a tractor trailer truck mm -hmm. or through the US mail or FedEx. Mm. So what it, I'm a little confused because recycling, you know, you take your bin down to the trash drop off. Is this additional recycling? What are you talking about? Right. So, um, you know, the, the community trash haulers, they handle the standard list of recyclables such as yogurt containers, mm -hmm. milk jugs, um, a mayo tub, uh, canned soup. Um, we all are, well, I hope we're all familiar with that list. What we do at the ARC is try to go beyond what is already being provided. So we don't offer recycling of the items that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, we focus on materials and products that aren't covered by your uh, community trash hauler. Mm -hmm. So um, a couple things. One is if I want to bring things to the ARC, I, I can't bring my paper and cardboard and, and tin and that kind of thing, right? Correct. But I can bring this, this other list of items. Can you tell me some of the, a couple of the items that you might be talking about? Sure. Um, we collect documents, office paper, confidential um, documents mm -hmm. for shredding. Mm -hmm. We store them on site and a uh, shredding company comes by once every few weeks to mm -hmm. shred the documents mm -hmm. on site. Um, and then that material is sent to a uh, paper mill for um, pulping and to be turned back into new office mm -hmm. paper. Um, we collect latex paint, that's liquid latex paint. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sent to the Chittenden Solid Waste District to be uh, made into new latex paint to be reused wow. or to be used in this yeah. area at a reduced rate compared to what you'd pay for latex paint at the hardware store. That's great. Yep, that's called local colors. Huh. Um, we collect old books, um, VHS tapes, CDs, DVDs, audio cassettes, floppy disks, um, healthcare wow. packaging. Healthcare packaging? Yeah. Oh, like beauty products? Beauty packaging, right. beauty um, products yeah. like shampoo, yep. the makeup containers, um, any, anything to do with health and beauty as long as the actual product has been removed from the right. packaging, from the container. So um, you wouldn't bring your eyeshadow with a stuff, you have to take get all that out before you. Yeah, we'll hopefully yeah. use it up. Yep, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, so how about if I go to the ARC and go talk to uh, Carl over there? Isn't Carl your person who works at the ARC? Yes, and, he um, is. And see if he can give me a tour and show me how it works. Great, I'm sure Carl would be happy to do that. <laughs> Recycling Collection Center, where we collect items that are hard to recycle and unusual in the sense that your traditional transfer stations won't accept these materials, but they are all recyclable materials. Here's some examples. 
These are the plastic bags that come out of a cereal box. Toothpaste tubes and toothbrushes we can collect. Um, floppy disks, um, inkjet cartridges, small electronics, button cell batteries like you find in a calculator or a hearing aid. Drink pouches, the aluminum sort that kids' drinks come in. Um, beauty products. We can take anything related to beauty products. All sorts of grocery-centered plastic bags and wraps. We collect cork. We collect plastic lids. Um, this is a number five plastic. We take rechargeable batteries of many different kinds. We collect reusable latex paint. If it's still liquid inside, we can get it into a reuse program. A lot of people have old books in their basement. We take all kinds of old books. Textiles, um, VHS and audio cassette. For folks who are heating their homes with wood pellets, we take uh, Wood pellet, the bags that the wood pellets themselves come in, that's a number four plastic bag. A DVD comes in that larger plastic box. We can take those here. Secure documents for shredding. We have a couple different levels of security that we can offer. We're open Mondays and Fridays, um, 1230 to 530. Um, it's a dollar per load, no matter how big your load is. Anything you bring in a load besides tires, it's just a dollar for the load. And that's a token dollar. We want people to be efficient about what they bring down here. We don't want you driving over with a tiny handful of batteries. We'd like it if you had a good load of stuff so that you're not making lots of runs and burning gas. But, uh, you know, we're here for your convenience. Mondays and Fridays, 1235. It's a dollar per load unless you bring tires. If you do bring tires, the cost of the tires covers anything else you want to bring. Too. Great. Thank right. you. So that looked really easy. You just bring your car up and give it to Carl, and he'll help you bring it around to all the bins? Yeah, I mean, what, what I encourage people to do is have a tote or two at home um, and collect the items in that tote, fill the tote up, preferably have a few totes, so you're yeah. not making many trips to the ark. Yeah. You, you can collect material over a couple of months period, bring the totes down, yeah. carry the totes into the ark, all the, all the receptacles are clearly labeled as to what goes where, but Carl's always there to assist you in making sure that you put the items in the correct box, right. tote, bin. Yeah. I was, one of the things that surprised me at the ARC was the amount of cereal bags you guys have. I mean, it's one of those things you throw in the bat, trash or any of them. You know, when you see them all consolidated, all of a sudden, you realize this little thing that you're throwing in the trash actually adds up to quite a big load when it's all combined. Um, so what does that, you know, what does that mean for central Vermont if we're pulling all that stuff out of the landfill? Well, one thing I think it indicates is just how much plastic packaging there is out there. So we're offering uh, to accept the plastic cereal bags and cheese packaging. And like you said, there's a lot of that coming in. Mm -hmm. But that also means there's still far more of that that is ending up in the landfill because we're only focusing on a, on a few that we have outlets for, the cheese, the cereal. Mm -hmm. um, but we all know that almost everything comes packaged in plastic in one mm -hmm. shape or another. Mm -hmm. um, and since we can't collect all that right now and the standard recycling stream doesn't accept it either, mm -hmm. Uh, most of it's ending up in the landfills. Still. Hmm. So what can people do about that? I mean, if you, if you don't want your plastic to end up in the landfill, other than bringing it to the ARC? Well, um, I guess the most important thing we can all do to reduce all of our waste is to purchase only what we actually need um, and purchase items thinking about the end how you're going to handle that product when it's no longer needed, how you're going to handle the packaging that that product mm -hmm. came in. Um, it's not just the impulse of purchasing the item. There's right. a lot that goes along with purchasing mm -hmm. that item, plus the whole environmental impact that went into manufacturing that item. Yeah. I think it becomes really evident if you go to the ARC to bring your stuff there, but just to see what it really, the, the volume that, you know, when I look at the cereal bag struck me because we ate a lot of cereal in our household. So, you know, our household probably could create that many cereal bags in a year. But it's, it's kind of frightening when you think of the whole 17-town district or, you know, all of the state of Vermont combined in our two landfills. Um, you know, it seems like that space might fill up pretty quickly. 
Yeah. Well, you can quickly get overwhelmed if you think about the state of Vermont or the U.S. or the global solid waste management problems. So um, to keep from getting too frustrated, I try to mm -hmm. focus just on our 17 towns that are within the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice and solid focus there. So tell me about, um, this is kind of a strange question, but what is, have you ever had anyone bring you something just really strange to the ARC? Really strange. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Well, if I were to look through all the VHS titles, yeah. I'm sure there'd be a lot of uh, yeah. really strange titles rel looking back from right. 2012 back to a cassette that may have come out in the 80s. Uh, no, I mean, everything's pretty standard. Right. We, right all have it, we all have it in our households. Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I don't yeah. use anything extraordinarily strange. And people just bring it in their car. So just drive up to the ark and unload the car and... Um, Sometimes you have to give them a few things back if it's not on the list or... Right. Um, well, that leads me to a couple of things. First of all, um, we do have a few uh, customers that come by foot from, right. from downtown Barrie. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, sometimes we have to turn some of the items away, but we're really fortunate in that we're located adjacent to the ReStore. Mm -hmm. So many of the items that we don't accept, the ReStore does accept for free, um, specifically uh, e-waste, which are things like um, computer monitors, stereo equipment, mm -hmm. um, any, anything to, any peripheral for a computer system. Mm -hmm. Those are all accepted for mm -hmm. free at the ReStore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I visited Carl today, I brought over a sewing machine to the ReStore. They were pretty happy to get that. So they, there's a... I, I bet you don't get many sewing machines there, but it seems like people could double up their loads if they had. Yeah, other definitely. Items we to we encourage um, people to maximize the effectiveness and efficiency of any trip they make, um, and that's the resource. I just want to touch on that. That okay, reduce what you purchase. That's that's obvious, but the next best step is to have items reused. Mm -hmm. Recycling is kind of the last chance of capturing that item to keep it out of the landfill. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're finished with an item but it's, and it's still usable, um, we'd love to see that item end up at the ReStore or the Salvation Army mm -hmm. or some other outlet where another family can come along and put that item to use again. Right. So probably with things like books and textiles, you'd rather you're getting maybe the old manuals that are no longer useful than the classic novels that could be donated to a bookstore. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I appreciate a classic novel from time to time. You know, right. They'll make it back to my house. Right. Um, the perks of working at the Ark. Yeah, and, and sometimes looking at the amount of books that we get, it can be a little discouraging to see, wow, you know, to see a bunch of books in there to think that book must have some more value left in it. But the alternative is that that person that brought it in was probably going to landfill that book. Hmm. So... This is the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the book is going to be shredded and will never be read again, but it's not going to rot. <laughs> it's not going to rot in a landfill. That uh, just sounds so doomsday. <laughs> but I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's much better for it to continue its life in the form of paper than to just go into the landfill and add to the mound. Correct. And I'm glad you brought back, I wanted to go back to the landfill because I understand that as we're filming this right now, this today was the deadline for the Moortown landfill to fix some of their problems. Um, right, to present their plan. Yeah, they were threatened with closure, which seems to me like a wake-up call, perhaps, for all of Vermonters that, um, you know, we're down to one landfill, should that happen? And even sh if it shouldn't happen, we're, we only have two. So maybe you could speak to that a little bit and... Well, yeah, we only have two, and um, who's going to want another landfill in their backyard? Mm -hmm. um, so the ARC and the mandatory recyclables, um, the state's new Act 148, are all trying to address this issue to reduce the demand on landfill space. What we, we, I mean, landfills will always be needed, or at least in the foreseeable future will always be mm -hmm. needed. But... 
we need to increase avenues to remove resources from the waste mm -hmm. stream. So the first step in that is not to think of your trash as waste, mm -hmm. but to think of your trash as resources. Mm -hmm. Just about everything in your trash was once viewed as a resource before it was turned into a product. Mm -hmm. So it's still a resource. It just mm. needs to be taken back out of the waste stream. Mm -hmm. And through markets, through subsidies, whatever the channels are, mm -hmm. to get that back into the manufacturing process again mm -hmm. and to keep virgin materials out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're talking the production of virgin materials, be it plastic, metal, um, heavy metals for batteries, paper from, mm -hmm. from trees, there's a huge environmental impact that goes along with creating virgin materials, mm -hmm. um, not just destruction of the resource and the terrain that they're mining from or could be mining from, but also the carbon footprint involved in the mining, the processing, mm -hmm. and the transportation of these materials. Mm -hmm. I have wondered about that often when you're remanufacturing, let's say, paper or metals. Um, it's, it still has a smaller carbon footprint to remanufacture than it does to um, go and get the virgin resource. Definitely. Much yeah. smaller. Yes. I've, I have, that has crossed my mind a few times. Um, now you have, to, you have to factor in transportation, mm -hmm. how far these items are being shipped from the, from the household to where it's recycled, mm -hmm. to where it's ultimately turned into product again. Mm -hmm. But given all that, it still is going to have a smaller carbon footprint right. than virgin materials. And then I think perhaps a larger conversation than our focus on the ARC today might be, um, and correct me if I have this phraseology wrong, but it, is it extended producer responsibility where there's a push for having manufacturers take back their packaging materials or engineer products in the first place to reduce waste? Yes, that is, yeah. that is what that particular movement is called. Yeah. Um, there can be pushback. Well, obviously there's pushback from industry. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, many industries and manufacturers are responsive or uh, receptive to this. Um, they can save money or often save money by reducing the packaging or simplifying the product, mm -hmm. streamlining the product. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have to think about the end, you know, how much mm -hmm. waste is in that product because mm -hmm. they're going to be on the hook to handle that mm -hmm. yeah. the end of life product. An example of it is. Uh, the, the state's e-waste program um, that I mentioned before with the uh, stereo and computer equipment, that's sponsored by the manufacturers of the electronic material. Mm -hmm. So they have to, so because of this program, they take into account the handling of the end of life product in their creation of new electronics. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So. Um that's a, a more global discussion, and I'd love to get into that more, but I want to keep focusing on the ARC because that's what we're here for. And sure. I love that the ARC is also one of these small steps that people can take in their own lives to reduce and to um, divert their waste or resources from landfills. Um, so I brought you a little present. Oh, good. <laughs> Christmas time. This falling apart laundry basket was filled with stuff from a van that I sold. And this is a van that, uh, that transported three kids and two adults for a few years. And we cleaned it out right before we sold it. And this ended up in the back of my storage room. And when I knew that I was going to be talking to you, I thought this would be perfect to go through this and you tell me what in here, this is the kind of thing someone might find if they're cleaning out a room or, um, or a car. And what, what can I bring to the ark from from my van. So let's right. see, let's pick through here. Um, okay, I found this old CD, Susan Boyle. Hmm, never heard of her. <laughs> never heard of Susan Boyle? I guess I have heard of her. She was uh, famous for, well, anyway, famous for a little while. It turns out I'm not crazy about it. Well, we can accept that, and that will be processed into plastic to be used in manufacturing again. The ReStore will accept it, and someone may still want to listen to Susan Boyle and they can they can purchase that from the ReStore. The ReStore would take price. this? Yes. No kidding. Even with the cracked case? Well, the case can be replaced with another case, right. but the, I imagine the CD is still fine and yep. the, the liner coat is still 
Fine. And here's an old scratched up CD. So you could take the CD and the case, but if I have a perfectly good CD in a case, I could bring it to the restore instead of putting right. it to the recycling. Right. You know, that's stream. going back to the reuse over yeah. recycling whenever possible. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, and this is a textbook from a class I taught. Uh, well, actually, it's, I never even used it, and it's a few years out of date. And the way that textbooks work is that as soon as they're a year or two out of date, nobody wants them. Even though it's perfectly good, never used, I hate to throw it out, you can take this. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, I probably could sell it or on Amazon, but I'm thinking that um, people just don't buy out of date textbooks. Well, try. Yeah. You know, post on Amazon, on eBay. But we accept all books, hardback, softback, um, magazines, things like that. We, we, in a pinch, we, we can take from you, but those can just go in your regular recycling stream. Okay. So this was my little girl's boot that she wore out. And I, I would love to find a place to take uh, shoes and boots. And we can usually we resell our kids' clothes to the used clothing store. No one wanted that one? <laughs> She wore this until she couldn't wear it anymore. She loved these boots. Yeah, well, this is a good example of um, something that, you know, if it were in better shape than this, I would say take it to the Salvation Army. Yeah. But given the condition, um, bring it on down to us, and we'll have the materials recycled. Okay. Um, and, of course, we had a little bit of oil in the car. We do not accept uh, automotive fluids, but you can visit our website, cvswmd.org, to get a list of collection dates for household hazardous waste. This is a hazardous waste? Yes, motor oil, uh -huh. um, most uh, automotive fluids are hazardous waste. Although, since controlled. it's still full, I could just use it. It doesn't go out of date, then, does it? The, great, yes, yeah. please please use that in the, in the appropriate season. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and this is the top of a pair of sweatpants that got cut off, so it's like fabric. Can you take that this? is now the strangest item that we would have accepted <laughs> at the art. Because we cut it up for rags. We were reusing. Great. But you can't okay. really use the part where the string goes. Yeah, bring so that. So that could go in textiles. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, bring that down to the ark, and that will be recycled or reused. Old socks that don't stay up anymore. Textiles. Bring them on down. Could be turned into industrial rags or the filling of uh, in furniture. Videos. This is my wedding video, so I don't think I'm going to give this to you, but um, you take VHS cassettes? Definitely. We get boxes and boxes of VHS cassettes. This is like a trip down memory lane. This is a curtain rod packaging. No, we don't take that, but um, you could pull off the cardboard, the box board tab, recycle that, yep. and the plastic, um, unfortunately, would have to go in the trash. Oh, too bad. But what about, now, okay, this would be getting really committed. These little metal snaps, could they go in your small metal hardware ah, good point. container? Yes, we <laughs> collect small metal hardware, um, such as that, or nails, um, screws, bent hardware, rusted hardware. Um, wow. And we get that recycled for scrap metal. We also accept bottle caps, um, metal bottle caps from a soda bottle, uh, for example. Um, and all that metal gets um, recycled through the scrap metal stream. Oh, I have a question about the metals. We burn a lot of tea lights in our household, and they have little metal holders. Can you take those? I think they're aluminum. Definitely. Okay. That's a good one. I bet there's a lot of those floating around the landfills. Yep. Any metal, bring it on down. So when I go through my bin, I found a receipt from the bank, which I would want to shred. I could go shred that at the ark. When I, I wouldn't go just with this, but... <laughs> That's good, please. But I can um, bring that? Yeah, if, if you feel that there's uh, information on there that you don't want to get out, you can bring it into our document shred. Or if not, you can just put it in your regular paper recycling. My daughter likes these little juice boxes. Pa pouches? Yes, drink pouches. We accept drink pouches. But not, not boxes, right? Exactly, thank you. And I don't know what this goes to. Can you guys take care of this? Yep. Cord. Bring that on down, and we'll okay. send that to a comp uh, recycling company in Middlebury called Good Point, and they will um, strip that down to its metal components and get those. Wow! Recycled. Really? They strip it down? Yep. That's amazing. And okay, I won't take up too much more time. This this was planted. This is my bag of bottle caps, um, but cereal bag which, and bottle caps. You said you'd take, right? So that's all. This is all bottle caps. This isn't a bottle cap 
it's that, uh, but it's like a container that um, some vitamins came in. Does that count? Well, we won't accept it, but odds are this can just go in your normal recycling stream, as long as it's more than two inches long in any one dimension, which okay. that definitely is. That yeah. can go in your regular recycling. Yeah, that two inch rule I think people don't know about. It's If it's smaller than two inches by two inches, it can't go into regular recycling, right? Right, now that doesn't pertain to paper and cardboard and box board. Um, it, it's relevant to metal and plastic um, because in these automated recycling separation facilities, it can jam up the machine. So okay. anything under two inches in one dimension Okay. Um, oh, you, you so, can't recycle. So this is a lid that I brought in as a bottle cap, but this could go on recycling. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, I don't think I have anything else in here for you. I guess that's it. And uh, of course, the basket itself, I could, I could still keep using it a little more before I decide to trash that. Oh, it's got years of life left. Yeah. Oh, and it left a little dust on here. So if. Um, Somebody wants more information about the ARC, you don't want to know how to get there, what your hours are, um, a complete list of what you take, what do they do? Well, I, I always recommend that our residents in our district visit our website mm -hmm. for many reasons. Um, but for the ARC, uh, yeah, great. Go to cbswmd.org and go to the collections uh, tab and you'll get information on the ARC, what we accept there, directions to the ARC. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to talk to somebody with questions, feel free to call us at the office, 802-229-9383. Um, I'm at ex extension 106. Great. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to, you to, um, doesn't this list of items you accept change? Uh, are you, should people check regularly before they stop by yeah, on the website? That's, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, we've had a, a couple uh, items that we've dropped over the few months that we've been operation, been in operation. But by and large, uh, the changes are additions of mm -hmm. new items that we collect. Mm -hmm. uh, the most recent item we added to the list, I believe, was uh, packing materials such mm -hmm. as bubble wrap, mm -hmm. uh, packing peanuts, those air pillows that you find in boxes yeah. and this time of year with all the packages that we'll be receiving um, put all those all that packaging aside put it yeah. in your arc tote mm -hmm. bring it on down um, and those materials we get reused uh, to local stores who mm -hmm. will then use it in their packaging great better to reuse it than anything but we're always uh, looking to add more items to the list that we collect that's great so people have any questions they can Call the office, check the website. Definitely. Okay. And uh, like I said, please visit the website um, for any of your solid waste uh, handling questions. Hazardous waste, recyclables, mandatory mm -hmm. recyclables, our school programs, mm -hmm. um, as well as the ARC. Yeah, and we're going to have somebody from the school here next time, too. Great. Well, They've got cool. a great program going Yay. on. So that's www.cvswmd.org or 229-9383. Thank you very much, Colin. My pleasure. Yeah, and thank you for tuning in.